and I'm just on Corporation Street and there's St. Clair Seaman's uh, Church, uh, Presbyterian Church beside us and there's the, the flyover and I'm just at the entrance to Belfast Harbour Commissioners. Everything about this place smacks of opulence and luxury and precision and uh, just extravagance. Belfast Harbour Commissioners established 1847 and there's the, uh, the the crest on this brass plaque uh, rich sandstone walls lovely uh, uh, just uh, so nicely carved and there's the uh, the crest on these uh, on, the, on the door as well and here's the entrance let's go in and have a wee look Oh look, automatic door, isn't that nice? And I've just been uh, given permission to do a bit of filming within the Belfast uh, Harbour Commissioner's office uh, down in Corporation Street here. And you can see uh, how ornate and uh, luxurious this place is. I mean, look at the mosaic on the floor there, and the whole place is mosaic floor. Uh, perhaps one of the main attractions of this uh, foyer area is this uh, item of furniture here. Um, this table, if I can get it in the light, was made by Gilbert Logan of Harland and Wolfe for the Titanic. It was intended for use by the ship's captain, Edward John Smith, and his dinner guests. And uh, it, um, it just didn't reach the Titanic before sailing. A delay in production, however, meant that the ship left Southampton uh, without the table. And uh, the table was going to be uh, put on the Titanic whenever she returned. Uh, but she never did return. The table was featured in uh, the Antiques Roadshow in Belfast and uh, the expert who examined the piece for the programme found the craftsmanship to be quite unremarkable but said that its connection to Titanic meant its value could not be placed on the table. A value could not be placed on the table. I've had very many exciting and very thrilling moments on the roadshow, but this has to be one of the best. And let's have a wee look at the table. And you can see uh, it's a very fine table for the captain and his guests. And here we have another artifact, presumably from the Titanic. Uh, uh, it's a, a, a bell here. I never even spotted that. This, is, this place is just full of treasures. Back to the table. There's the captain. And there's the, uh, the table being made and some of the various chairs that would have uh, decked or graced the dining rooms of the Titanic. My goodness. Uh, there's so many things to point a camera at here. Uh, look at this wonderful uh, stained glass window. Uh, commerce, navigation, spinning, weaving, engineering, all uh, as a wee memorial to the, uh, the industry of Belfast. Some of the paintings that decorate the wall. Here's one. Uh, paddle steamer Blenheim. Uh, traded between Belfast and Liverpool 1848 to 1863. And look at the marble. My goodness. And here we have a model ship. It is the what's it? 
the Elmer Nimick Belfast. And on over here we have the Saint Column. Obviously built in Belfast as well. And here we have what's this? A paddle steamer of some kind. Um, models of the two paddle steamers which played Belfast Lock. Uh, 1864 and then we have a ginormous painting of the landscape as it was uh, overlooking Belfast Lock um, and we see the Hollywood Road Belfast to Hollywood Bangor Railway uh, and that's a pen drawing of the actual map, or now of the actual uh, picture. My goodness. This is a wonderful place. Uh, I'm not allowed to go up the stairs, but there are, there are further uh, treasures to be found up there. Uh, look at the ceiling and the cornices. This, this is... This is a wonderful tourist attraction and yet very, very few people come anywhere near it. Oh my goodness, here's another wee room in here. What's this? The current regalia worn by the present uh, day commissioners. There we are. Nice wee waist, waist uh, jacket. Belfast is born. Oh, there's a whole exhibition in here I didn't know anything about. Uh, <laughs> worth visiting to have a wee look, but few people do because they don't think that they're allowed. Uh, there's William Perry, uh, Harbour Commissioner, 1847 to 58. Uh, Robert Thompson. Another one, Ernest Herdman, 26 to 1945. Barnett, William Barnett, CBE, and Leonard O'Hagan. Good old Leonard. Uh, cre creating the Port and Harbour Estate. And a lovely, a lovely uh, stained glass window here. That's, uh, this is absolutely. Hold on. Look at that. Isn't that? Isn't that? It's fantastic. My goodness. Isn't that wonderful? And other items on the wall. That I don't know anything about. But no doubt are Wonderful ceremonial uniform used by uh, Harbour Commissioners. Come down and, and see this place for yourself. It's, it's absolutely fantastic and it says I didn't know that. Things you knew, never knew about Belfast Harbour. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you. I know very little. I would need to spend a week down in here. There we go. There's no expense being spared down here. And here we look out onto uh, Corporation Street with Muldoon's pub sitting across the street. Belfast Harbour Board, Rule of Honour. There we go. Isn't this wonderful? I'll take one of these home and stick it in the living room. Belfast Harbour Commissioner's Office. End of September. 
2014. And I'm just on Corporation Street and there's St. Clair Seaman's uh, Church, a uh, Presbyterian Church beside us. And there's the, the flyover and I'm just at the entrance to Belfast Harbour Commissioners. Everything about this place smacks of opulence and luxury and precision and just extravagance. Belfast Harbour Commissioners, 18, established 1847, and there's the, uh, the, the crest on this brass plaque. Uh, rich sandstone walls, lovely, uh, uh, just uh, so nicely carved, and there's the uh, the crest on these uh, on the on the door as well. And here's the entrance. Let's go in and have a wee look. Oh, look, automatic door, isn't that nice?